Hello, my name is Hans van Zutphen, and I'm the maker of an algorithm that restores clipped audio. Now before I'm going to tell you anything more about it, I'll first give you a quick demo to give you an impression of what it does. Uh, for this demo, I'm using some audio that I clipped myself to very clearly show what happens. Here's the audio before declipping. And after declipping, it sounds like this. So let's go into a little more detail. Let's say we have this green signal and we clip it at the location of the black line. Uh, then if we want to reconstruct it, we basically only have all the information below this black line. So for example, if you want to reconstruct this area, all you have is this cup and this signal. Now, the simple way of reconstructing would be to extrapolate this line, which means that you would come up with something that continues with a curve like this, going up and down. And from this side you only have a cup, so we just do something. We merge this together and it will be somewhat close to the original. On this side we can do something similar. Here it will also be expected to go down again. Here we have this cup and well, you can just go up and merge it again. This will give a reasonable approach that will also sound reasonably well. However, if I look at the center area and I'm not going to use the parts that I just reconstructed myself and are by definition unreliable, all I have to go on is this cup and this cup. So if, I, if I'm going to extrapolate this, I will probably just go up and from this, this side I'll do the same. These two will get merged again and you'll get something like this. Now, this is definitely better than the original. It's better than the clipped uh, signal because at least the low frequency sound is restored, you get more dynamics. But the high frequency sound that's on top of it is still missing in this area and this will still distort very badly. And that means that uh, this way of reconstructing is not going to work and the only way to do it is if you're going to reconstruct this area, you also have to look to this part and this part. But you have to ignore these parts. I've been thinking about this for quite a long time and eventually I found a solution that combines all the available information to find the best possible match. And I can probably even mathematically prove that this is the ideal solution. I then wrote a heuristic algorithm that approaches this best possible solution in a constant amount of time. And that also means that it's now usable in real-time applications. Now it's time for some real world samples. One track that's really known for being badly clipped is Scar Tissue by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Please notice the crackling voice at the start of the track. I'll increase the highs a bit so you can hear it better. South spoken with broken jaw, step outside but not to brawl and autumn sweet with call the fall. I'll make it to the moon if I have to crawl in with the birds South spoken with a broken jaw, step outside but not to brawl in autumn sweet with call the fall. I'll make it to the moon if I have to crawl in with the birds and share this alone. There's one important issue remaining, and that's accurate clipping detection. If we detect too many samples as being clipped, that means we'll be basing the reconstruction on too little information, and we might even be damaging good audio. On the other hand, if we detect too few samples as being clipped, we'll be basing the reconstruction on bad data, which is even worse. Now you might think it's simple, you just take the samples at the top and at the bottom of the waveform, but unfortunately, due to things like uh, equalization, MP3 encoding and analog audio paths, Things are often not this obvious. Here are some images from Metallica's Death Magnetic album from 2008, which is notorious for the extreme amount of clipping. As you can see, there's not a clean level above which clipping occurs. The lines are not flat, but tilted or even curved, and they're noisy. The declipper uses five different methods to determine if a sample is clipped or not. And only if they all agree that the sample is clipped, it will be declipped.
audio processing usually enhances the details in a recording. Unfortunately, in case of clipped audio, that means that it will enhance the clipping distortion. And if you check today's top 40, you probably won't find a single track without clipping distortion in it. The declipper helps there. And it does more than that. If you look at the images here behind me, you can see that it also restores the lost dynamics caused by clipping.